Our first speaker will discuss on the various considerations in teaching the new general education subject, mathematics in the modern world, in the context of outcomes-based education. It details the development of a couple of core syllabi, following Chet's guidelines, gives suggestions, shares first-hand experiences, and points to teaching resources to increase the chances of success in teaching this anxiety and thought-provoking subject. <coughs> Dr. Rizal D. C. Nocon is a full-time faculty member of the Mathematics Department of De La Salle College of St. Camille. He has been teaching since 1988 and has been with CSB since 1994 and has served as chairperson of the Mathematics Department, Dean of the School of Multidisciplinary Studies, Director of the Center for Learner-Centered Instruction and Research, and Vice President for Academics. He also taught at Araulio High School, Adamson University, Philippine Normal University, and St. Paul College, Manila. He obtained his Bachelor of Science in Mathematics for Teacher degree from PNU, and later earned the degrees in Masters of Science in Teaching Mathematics and Doctor of Philosophy in Science Education from De La Salle University, Manila. He is husband to our very own Dr. Edelina Nocon of DLSU Manila's Mathematics Department and father to their five children, none of whom wants to teach mathematics now or in the foreseeable future. <laughs> his interests include none of whom I'm sorry. His interests include mathematics education, learner centered teaching, the use of educational technology in the teaching learning process, and writing math books and instructional materials. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Rosaldi C. Noma.
Problem. I would ask my what is an important tool in our lives. I used to think that math in general was for accountants and financial things, but I now know we use it every day, and it delighted me to know that the smallest of things, math is being applied. The math of the course has helped me change my view in mathematics because it made me open up my eyes and it helped me realize that there is math in anything and everything we do. Social choice theory very interesting because um, it involves voting. And in the upcoming elections, it's uh, important to know <coughs> such, and that I now know that there's a fairness criteria to be found. The topic that I find most interesting is the one about fractals, because I am more of an art person, and it helped me discover different ways on how we can make different patterns or different designs. <laughs> Any difficulty in learning the lessons because the teachers were able to discuss the lessons well, and that if ever I find a difficulty or a problem, I would ask my blockmates and they would teach me immediately. The topic that I find difficult is the one where we had to use the stepping stone method. Um, I, I was kind of confu it was kind of confusing at first because we had to go around and around. But after a practice, I was able to understand it and get it. So to talk to someone about math, I would say that their views about math would change, and it'll open their eyes as to why we still need and learn math. I would tell the person that it is a go. Um, you just have to listen well and ask if you need to ask questions then raise your hand and ask some questions so that you can understand the topic more if you don't but then the topics are really pretty simple social choice theory i see the usefulness of mathematics in voting i now know that there are voting rules to be followed and that there is a fairness criteria. Making everyday decisions, such as choosing where to go, what to do, um, what to wear, what to eat, etc. Think of coding theory. I see the usefulness of mathematics in the language of computers and the importance of co uh, communicating with someone, such as sending uh, sending text messages or private messages, direct messages, etc. Think of cryptography. I see the usefulness of mathematics in keeping important documents hidden or secret and knowing the different ciphers that have been made. Messaging someone with the key that only they know. For example, if you... Uh, I mean, like, if... If you want to send a private message and you only want the other person to know about it, then you'd have your own key. You have you you'd have your own um, way of communicating with that person, and only that person and yourself can decrypt those codes. Linear programming. I see the usefulness of mathematics and knowing the constraints and knowing the certain optimal solution to the problem. The shortcuts are what helps us find different ways to get to from one like for, let's say one from one place to another um it helps us save time it helps us manage time save energy um save money save gas so yes that's what i think all of the topics are used for okay uh again this is too dense so i'm just mentioning terms uh, which you don't usually find in uh, in a general education course, uh, uh, 
uh, you, you heard them talk about social choice theory, about cryptography, about coding theory, <coughs> okay? Uh, topics uh, which we all probably uh, uh, encounter in graduate school, but after graduating, after getting our uh, degrees, you know, we, for, we, we, we forgot all about them uh, uh, already, unless uh, you're assigned to teach uh, math uh, uh, majors. Okay, again, uh, outputs. Okay, uh, here is one of the uh, uh, outputs required okay, in that uh, subject. Okay, this is an infographics uh, about shortest path. Okay, another uh, set of in infographics about probability, that's odds and chances, social choices, uh, about game theory. Here are some more about savings, about stocks and bonds, about coding theory, cryptography, outputs uh, of students. Uh, here's another. Uh, mathematics uh, in art. Uh, you have the uh, piece pattern, you have, you have fractals, okay, and, and the students made use of those in uh, t shirt design. Here are magazines, okay, which uh, they, they assemble, okay, uh, on di different topics. Cryptography here, about money, about cracking codes, okay, etc. And even uh, uh, comics. Okay. Now another thing that I, I want to show you is uh, okay, maybe this one. A, a blog, uh, which uh, some teachers uh, ask uh, their students to. Uh, student okay, posting, uh, I don't know, uh, probably this is an activity, okay. uh, she got 100% uh, with all the markings done by uh, her teacher. This is a uh, problem in optimization. Okay, another uh, output, this is a, a quiz on social choice theory and uh, coding theory. So the, the students are somehow uh, asked not to, to reflect on uh, these activities, what the results mean, and uh, maintain some kind of portfolio. This is uh, an activity on uh, codes. Okay, I think they're getting uh, distances. Answering questions and the, the, the teachers are grading them. There is a seat work. Okay. Uh, the, the students were asked to do uh, some things okay, in relation to pyramid deepening and exploring, etc. etc. So we, we're not talking about uh, something okay, uh, which is uh, not yet existing. We were talking about uh, the implementation of. Uh, of a course, okay. Uh, I'm going to show you a uh, class record, so you, you, you get to see um, what happened eventually in uh, one of the courses, one of the twenty uh, courses sections, rather. Okay, I omitted, uh, of course, the uh, names, but uh, we, we have here the degree program, mostly from the College of Liberal Arts. But when we teach, when we teach this subject uh, later on, we'll have all sorts of students, students who will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking engineering uh, uh, degrees, uh, business degrees, okay, not, not just liberal arts. But the fact that uh, uh, these usually math lovers, uh, students, uh, are performing uh, well, okay, that, that should uh, 
give us uh, an idea. So here are some uh, items uh, which uh, the teacher uh, recorded. Uh, I think it's about the math autobiography. The students at the beginning of the term were asked uh, to narrate what their experiences are in relation to mathematics uh, so far up to that point. And then these are some uh, blogs, okay, which uh, the students are being asked to maintain. Blogs on coding theory, uh, cryptography, linear programming. I think this is shortest path. Uh, shortest paths, uh, consumer mathematics, about arts, and uh, game theory. Okay, they were asked to to uh, create a video for a quiz. There's there's a take home exam here probably on cryptography. We says again on social and coding social choice and uh, coding theory. Another piece of cryptography. <coughs> quite a long uh, class record, uh, exercises, etc, etc. Now, we're, we're not saying that you maintain something like this, but uh, you, you get the idea. This is an actual implementation. Now, uh, let me go back to the uh, presentation. Here's another uh, uh, perspective. These are two classes, okay, and then you can see here the uh, uh, range of grades of the students, which uh, I mean, which the students eventually got. In this section, okay, 39% of the class got uh, grades ranging from 91 to 100%, okay, uh, which is which is uh, which is a lot, no? uh, 39%. But uh, in this other section, it's even bigger. <coughs> 70% of the students okay, got uh, grades ranging from 91 to 100. But as you can see here, that there are uh, still failing students. Uh, about 6% still fail. Mo most probably they fail due to absences or you know, not submitting uh, uh, requirements. Uh, lazy students will still be lazy students, <laughs> no, no matter you know, uh, what you do. Okay. Now, uh, le let me uh, show you what brought about those outputs. Uh, let me show you actual uh, actual the actual sil uh, uh, syllabus uh, that they use. Okay, uh, let's start with okay. Now instead of uh, just pasting uh, pasting pasting uh, parts of this. And uh, the, the slides, uh, you can see here. And <clears throat> so here it is, an actual map in the modern world uh, uh, syllabus. We have the course description, the outcomes, already uh, uh, obedized, as they uh, say, uh, you know, following Chad's uh, format. Here are the uh, course outcomes and uh, the prescribed format. So you have the topics here, the learning outcomes, the assessment, uh, methods, and uh, resources. So the, the topics, okay, which uh, Chad was talking about, okay, are already implemented in uh, their math appreciation uh, uh, course. Actually, they, they have this unique opportunity, opportunity. Most of the schools, even yours probably, will not have the chance not to implement something like this before 2018. But their, that's the, but their course, Math Appreciation, okay, has been existing for so many uh, years. Uh, and the, the goal is the same, for the students to appreciate uh, uh, mathematics. Not the arithmetic mathematics, no, but the mathematics, which actually uh, power our modern world. Uh, because there's some disconnect. No? If you're talking about mathematics in the modern world, and you're not talking about cryptography, because you, you, you do this, uh, you know, bank transactions, you, you do these online transactions, and it's being powered by, by things like uh, uh, cryptography. And you have issues like, uh, you know, the Greek uh, death crisis, and it's full of game theory uh, 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 implications. And, uh, still, we're not, uh, you know, giving the students the opportunity to 
appreciate the mathematics that we have come to uh, learn and love. Okay, so weeks four to five, consumer mathematics. And anyway, I'm just uh, pointing out uh, the, the format of uh, topics, learning outcomes, assessment, methods, and resources. I, I'm sure uh, you'll have the uh, opportunity uh, to uh, take your uh, syllabus, your school's implementation of mathematics in the modern world uh, later on. Now, what, what uh, we can do is to share this with you. We, we can share this uh, syllabus with you, and uh, maybe you can use them as a... Uh, you can use it as basis for your own version. We also have ours at the uh, De La Salle College of St. Vinil. Okay. So again, you have the uh, course outcomes. Okay. Pretty much the same format okay? because uh, somehow we, we are uh, expected to uh, to come up with this learning outcomes, assessment, methods, and uh, uh, resources. Now, of course, you need the the, the, syllab the, the syllabus, okay, so that uh, you can come up with those requirements, no? which will result to those uh, uh, outputs. Okay, so in your syllabus, you should have uh, first the course outcomes, which is different from um, the learning outcomes, and then you have the content. The methodology, how to teach the uh, the thing, how to teach the topic, so that you uh, achieve the outcomes. The assessment, okay. How will you find out if you're able to uh, teach it well, and uh, how do you find out if the students okay, are able to uh, achieve what they need to achieve? The, the resources and the thing which uh, ties up everything. Uh, the learning plan, okay. Uh, consists of all of this together with uh, uh, the time frame, okay? Uh, how many weeks, uh, how many hours per week, etc., etc. So I'll go through all of this, okay? And uh, make use of uh, documents like, you know, the, the ones from chat, etc., etc. Okay, let's start with the course and uh, learning outcome. From a document distributed by Chad, okay, you can find this uh, OBE framework. Okay, Th this uh, framework makes sure that the different okay uh, goals, outcomes are aligned. So you start with your institution's vision, mission, and goals. Your institution's outcomes, okay, and then the program outcomes, referring to the general education program outcomes until uh, you reach the uh, course outcomes. So uh, our syllabi okay, will, will uh, look a bit uh, different uh, from each other okay, because we have different uh, uh, institutional goals. Okay. When you talk about OBE, you're actually referring to an approach. Okay. It's uh, an approach says here that focuses and organizes the education system around what is essential. So it's an approach around what is essential to achieve a desired level of uh, competence. Uh, a, few, a few years back, okay, uh, there's this concept called backward design. Okay, we can send of time. So you start with uh, the essentials. No? Why, why are the students uh, in the school in the first place? And uh, what uh, are you hoping they will be able to achieve? And then from, from those essential questions, you backtrack, okay? Uh, until you are able to design the, the, uh, the instruction. Now, when you do this uh, OBE thing in your uh, uh, institutions, okay, these are the things that uh, you need to do. First, you describe the attributes of your ideal graduates based on your vision and mission as part of your institutional goals or outcomes. And then you use the attributes as basis for developing specific program outcomes. Now, supposedly, the program outcomes that we're referring to here are the outcomes for the specific programs. Now, for example, you have a uh, Bachelor of Science in uh, Business Administration, uh, major in Computer Applications. That program will have its own okay, uh, uh, set of outcomes. Uh, and yes, it's a tedious thing to do because you will have to do uh, that thing, uh, the school will have to do that thing for all the programs. 
or you can also refer to just the general education program. Okay? And then you translate these desired outcomes to what the students learn in specific courses or course outcomes. So here they are again. You start with institutional goals, together with your vision and mission, and your ideal graduate attributes. And then from this, the program outcomes. And only after these things, the course outcomes. Okay. Now, when you implement this, it will, of course, affect uh, the, the faculty members. Uh, in fact, there is an effect on the quality and on the orientation of faculty members. This uh, enterprise will uh, uh, somehow influence no? uh, the criteria that you apply in hiring and retaining uh, uh, faculty members. Now, as, as mentioned a while ago in the uh, welcome remarks, we are uh, in a stage no? uh, where we are facing uh, some sort of personal tsunami. Uh, what do we do come 2018? Uh, there are so many things happening in our respective uh, schools. And you know, uh, later on, we are faced with the question, do, do I stay teaching in the tertiary education, or do I go down and teach uh, the uh, senior high school? Now, most of us will probably say, you know, I, I want to stay here. I, I want to stay teaching uh, in college. Uh, I want to stay you know, teaching in tertiary education. But we, we have to deal with the fact that uh, uh, there's this thing, uh, this revision in the curriculum. And we have to uh, make the necessary adjustments so uh, we can become the teachers that uh, our respective schools actually need. We cannot say, I, I want to teach here. I don't want to go to do in your high school, and then do not make the necessary preparations. Okay, now, a, a part of the uh, preparation is, uh, you know, uh, internalizing this shift in the focus of education from inputs-based, the so-called teacher-centered uh, paradigm, to outcomes-based, uh, also learner-centered. Now, we will take a look at uh, IB versus uh, OB, inputs based and out uh, uh, outcomes based on several levels. No? First, let's start with the purpose. For inputs based, the purpose is to provide and deliver instruction. Okay, Most traditional schools uh, do this. But for outcomes based, we are here to produce learning. Provide instruction versus uh, produce learning. In the old uh, uh, paradigm, uh, we can see ourselves transferring knowledge uh, to the students. But in the uh, uh, OB, outcomes-based education, we need to elicit student discovery. So they will need to construct, uh, actively construct knowledge okay, based on uh, our inputs. So IB, inputs-based, the goal is uh, to improve the quality of instruction. Better teachers, uh, uh, better uh, situation. But in outcomes based, the, the goal really is to improve the quality of learning. Not the teaching, but the learning. Now, in terms of structures, IB is atomistic, whilst uh, OB is holistic. In IB, time is constant and learning varies. When you say uh, time is constant, the schedule is from 8 uh, to 9.30, you will uh, make use of that time, okay? Doesn't matter how you use it, you, you use the full schedule. Okay, but uh, OB, uh, learning can happen outside of that 8 to 9.30 class, okay? Uh, you know, you can be connected uh, uh, with the students in some other uh, mode. Okay, for IB, you have one teacher, one classroom. But for OB, whatever learning experience works, including team teaching, which is uh, one of the things that they did here, okay? Uh, there's this setup where a teacher, you know, goes to uh, several sections, okay? And, and teach uh, the same topic. Now, as for learning theory, IB maintains knowledge exists out there, okay? and must be transferred to the students. But for outcomes-based, knowledge exists in each person's mind. Uh, 
uh, that, that's why one of the things that uh, uh, they did is to ask the students, what, what is your experience about mathematics so far? Okay? And then uh, uh, at the end of the course, they, they were asked, uh, how did this uh, uh, subject contribute to your world view of uh, mathematics? That's what the, uh, the first video was all about, asking the students to reflect on uh, what happened during the term. Okay, in IB, learning is teacher-centered and controlled, while in OP, learning is learner-centered and uh, learner-controlled. Now, of course, we see Facebook uh, posts like, uh, you know, this is not high school. Right? Uh, we have a class now. Okay. Uh, you know, you, you can act like high school students here when we provide everything. This is a university, etc., etc. But uh, uh, there are ways of uh, making the classroom learner-centered without allowing the students to, to control, you know, what's happening. Uh, okay, in IB, the classroom and learning are competitive and individualistic. But here, cooperative, collaborative, and supportive. So, so you have, uh, you know, uh, more group activities, even group uh, uh, tasks and projects. Now, uh, I think this is the last one. As for the roles and input space, faculty are primarily lecturers. Now, we're not saying that lecturer uh, will, not, will not have a, a place anymore uh, in outcomes-based education. Lecturer could be an important part, okay? But uh, we, we have to make use of other uh, modes because uh, we should see faculty members as uh, designers of uh, learning methods and environments. Teachers classify and sort students, uh, actually grades them as well, while in outcomes based, teachers develop every student's competencies and talents. So whatever they bring inside the classroom, uh, uh, we, we, need, uh, we need to uh, help them uh, develop those competencies and talents. And for IB, any expert uh, can teach, in fact, anyone who has the required uh, degree proudly teach. And in fact, there are those teaching in college uh, who really did not train to become teachers. Uh, we, we have engineers teaching, okay, we, we have, uh, you know, but that's what I'm saying. If you really want to teach, uh, you, you should uh, know more about uh, teaching. We should uh, continually aspire to improve as teachers, so that you can uh, empower your uh, students. Okay, here is the framework again. I was talking about uh, OBE a while ago. Now, I'll, I'll uh, uh, give you a tour of this uh, flowchart, and let's start with a vision mission. So here's a sample vision mission. I, I got this from uh, in UP Visayas. I was in Tacloban uh, a couple of months ago, and I saw uh, a vision so short. Uh, love words lang. A center of academic excellence in Eastern Visayas. Now, you should take time to look at your school's uh, vision statement. There are schools, the vision statement is so long. You probably uh, will not be able to uh, uh, recall them. The mission. Okay. May Just three statements. To be the premier institution of higher learning in Eastern Messiahs. In fact, the second uh, mission statement is uh, already these schools uh, uh, graduate <coughs> attributes. Okay? Uh, uh, they are aiming that their graduates would be humanists. Development oriented, critical, articulate, creative, and service oriented. So if you do OBE, okay, all the activities up, up to the, uh, the the smallest activity in, in uh, the course will have to contribute to the attainment of this particular uh, mission. So uh, which activity, and why are you saying that those activities uh, would contribute to uh, the, the graduates becoming more critical? More articulate. Okay, you should be asking them, uh, you know, uh, to reflect on uh, certain concepts, and not only that, they be able to express themselves. 
because you're saying you want them to be more articulate, really given service oriented, and to preserve and enhan enhance the, the, the Filipino culture. So when when uh, the time comes that you need to create your own uh, uh, syllabus for mathematics in the modern world, it is the first thing that you, you should revisit your school's vision and mission and make sure that each topic, each activity, each uh, uh, assessment, and even the method of teaching should contribute to attaining this. Okay. Here's a sample of graduate activities. This is the LSU Manila. Okay. Uh, you know, when, when you enter a, uh, a program here at De La Salle University, Manila, what they're saying is that at the end, you'll be a critical and creative thinker. You'll be an effective communicator, a reflective lifelong learner, and you'll be a service-driven citizen. Okay. So when, when a, uh, uh, a La Salle student graduates, I think they're saying that okay, they have this knowledge, skills, and attributes that graduates should acquire and demonstrate in their course of studies as evidence of accomplishing the school's uh, uh, vision. You should have one. I, I'm sure you have one in your uh, uh, school. Now, speaking of the program outcomes, uh, I, I was, uh, uh, I mentioned a while ago no, that this might refer to the individual uh, outcomes okay, of the different programs in your school. But there is also this general education program outcomes. Now, just imagine, about uh, what, four years ago, uh, they, they uh, proposed that, they, uh, that, that we change our general education curriculum, slashing the number of general education units from about 54 to just about 33. Okay? And uh, uh, that would cause a lot of uh, uh, us, uh, uh, what do you call this, to have reduced uh, loads. For example, in our school, we, we usually have uh, six or nine units of mathematics. And, and that school of ours is mathematics averse. They, they, they don't want mathematics for, for their uh, uh, students, I mean, uh, for, for the program students. So that's the meaning, six units. And then, uh, according to this uh, proposal, it will be reduced to just three, three units. Uh, so imagine the implication uh, sa, sa enrollment. Now, uh, another thing is that uh, the schools, you also have to watch about, uh, uh, you should also watch developments. No? For example, here in the LSU Manila, would you believe that uh, science, technology uh, in society Okay, social science. Not the science, but the social science. Because they're saying it's about, it's talking about society. So, buti naman sa mathematics, walang aagaw sa ating bigla na ngayon. When you say mathematics in the modern world, it's really mathematics. So, no, 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 nobody from, uh, for example, the College of Business would say, ah, we will teach that. Okay. Anyway. There's this document. Uh, just uh, search this uh, in uh, search for this in the internet. Uh, the justification, the justification on why this shift. Okay, why are they doing away with uh, the old setup, the, the general education uh, uh, setup? Anyway, they're saying that this revision, okay, would result to us having students possessing intellectual competencies personal and civic competencies and practical responsibilities. Okay, I'll just uh, go through the, the list. Okay, scan and, uh, you know. Of course, not a few of uh, us no, uh, had this uh, impression, oh, masyadong lofty yan. Proficient and effective communication. Okay? Uh, Somehow, our uh, students currently, okay, uh, in the tertiary uh, level, okay, are having difficulty okay, expressing themselves. Uh, good luck, proficient and effective communication. But but uh, please be aware that there's a uh, counterpart effort in the uh, basic education uh, level 
there's this thing called college readiness standards. You should take note of that. College readiness standards okay, uh, is a list of uh, uh, things that Ed okay, is saying graduates of K to 12 okay, will possess by the time they graduate from uh, grade, 12, grade 12. And they're saying all of this, all of these students graduating uh, from the K to 12 curriculum are quote unquote college ready. College ready. And uh, you know, you, you should take a look at that document also about college readiness <coughs> standards. And you will see that there are things that, okay, they're, they're claiming that there are things that the students can already do by the time uh, uh, they reach your classrooms in uh, the college level. And you should, you should take a look. Because there are things there, probably uh, a lot of teachers in the tertiary uh, uh, level cannot do themselves right, right now. Like, you know, being proficient with uh, technology, etc. Maka pagdating ng mga students in your uh, classroom, they, they're better handling, you know, all of these uh, modes. And you, the teacher, okay, is the one who is not ready for, for these students.